So as you can see, the dog head is done. Uh, it's actually pretty late at night. It's a little past midnight, but uh, here's the dog head. Uh, as you can see, there are a few more features. The ears I sewed. Uh, it's just fur on this side, fleece on this side, like I said earlier. Uh, and then I added a nose. Now, I like the nose a lot. It's actually pretty close to what I originally drew up. Uh, how I made the nose. My sister, she's going to college soon, and so she got a MacBook. And in the packaging, there was some foam that was used to, you know, to protect the laptop. And so... She let me have it, because, you know, I use foam a lot. And I thought, you know, I might use this for a project soon. And, uh, I, I was coming, thinking of the nose. Air conditioner again. Uh, and then, I had a nose I was going to use for an earlier project that I never used. And it was really small, so I thought maybe not that one. I was thinking maybe I could, you know, make a fabric one. I thought, eh, you know, I'd have to, I don't have anything to make the nose with. And so, I don't know, I thought maybe I could just take some regular foam and spray paint it, but I thought, yeah, that would take too long to dry and everything. Then I remembered I had this, and uh, so I just cut off a piece, and I actually carved it using fabric scissors and a women's razor, because you can use that to carve foam and, you know, smooth out the edges a bit, and so that's what I did. You can't see it that well, but you can see that it's a little round on some of the edges. I don't know how easy it is to see that, but uh, it is, and also you can see right here are three uh, strands of hair, and instead of hair, I actually used this feather. I found it at Walmart uh, for a few dollars, and I always seen people make puppets with uh, ostrich feathers, because this is what these are. These are ostrich. Oh, that was grammatically incorrect. I'm too tired to fix it, but... Uh, these are ostrich feathers, and uh, these are orange, if you can't tell. Because I, I keep seeing the color, and the color seemed off to me. I don't know why, but uh, I found this at uh, Michael's. I don't know if they still have it there. But uh, what I did was I just took three strands, I hot glued the tips, and I put them right in the center of the head. And I took some of the fur and just pushed it on top. And so it just moves around. And yeah, looks pretty neat. Uh, that's actually also something that I originally drew up. And so the head looks pretty close to the original drawing, and I'm very happy with it. So, uh, now that I'm done with the head, next I'm going to do the body. Uh, before I make the body, I have to make a sleeve, or, well, actually not a sleeve, a neck for the head. Uh, that'll just be uh, a ring of fabric that'll go from here a few inches down so that once I do make a sleeve like I showed with Leonardo da Vinci, uh, then I can sew on some other fleece that I don't have to use up all the fur, and then I'll start on the body. And I'll do all that tomorrow because it's late and I'm tired. As you can see, here's the dog head, and here's the body sleeve that I gave it so uh, from far. Now, you just need a few inches for the regular fabric as a head suit so shows a neck, and so it doesn't look odd, you know, but uh, after, if you don't want to waste the fabric, then use anything, really. I just use some old fleece that uh, I can never get to work for some reason, and uh, you know, use that for the remainder. And right now I have the foam pieces for the body uh, all uh, pinned together. Now, with the head, you can usually do it in two pieces, but for the body, you usually want to do about five pieces, so it doesn't look odd, because if you do two, then... It'll be kind of flat. If you do three, it'll look like a triangle. Four, it'll look like a box. And so, five. Uh, five to six. Five si five or more, basically. You know, more pieces, the more round it's going to be. But, uh, you know, it'll, it'll be fine. I might even cut it down the middle and glue it again. But for the fabric, it doesn't really matter. But, uh, yeah, that's basically an update. Uh, so I'm about to hot glue this together. And, by the way, uh, for the body, I just did something like this. Uh, it's just uh, a pattern I made. Uh, basically, you f have to figure out how big or round you want the bottom of the body to be, how big you want the top to be, and how tall you want it to be. And so I realized I wanted the top to be 15 inches, the bottom to be 25 inches, and I wanted it to be 12 inches tall. So I made it into five pieces, 
and this is about three inches, the bottom's about five inches, and uh, it's twelve inches tall. And so I'm about to hot glue it together and see what happens. Uh, as you probably noticed the last few videos, I don't show a lot of emotion. Uh, and most of the time, like always, you know, trying to be funny and everything. Uh, in reality, I'm really boring, and I don't show a lot of personality. I don't know why, I just don't. But, uh, yeah, I, I, it seems that when I get close to the end of building a puppet, I tend to be happy or whatever. I don't know. Probably because it's close to being finished. Which, the puppet is, because I did the body. So, the body sleeve, I was going to sew it around the inside, but that was coming too hard, so I just hot glued it. Uh, the tube was actually too thin, because it was only about 12 inches round. This is about 25 inches, and so it wouldn't go correctly, so I had to cut it into three different sections and glue it that way. And it worked, and it's stuck together in there, and body turns and everything. And I also have the two holes, and I sewed the two pieces of fur together, and I even cut a hole right through the foam too. So there we go, there's a hole for the buttons, and yeah. So I'm going to do a tail later, that's not going to be too hard, but uh... Next, I'm going to do the arms. The rod arms take a little longer, and I I probably won't do those for a while, because they do take a long time, and I've been doing this puppet for a couple of weeks now. I'm actually going to do the the, the, ugh, the live arms, and long time, not a long time ago, I, I made a puppet for a school project, and I used this for the arms. And uh, I got a hand, this was the prototype, that looked like this. And it worked pretty well, you know. It's not exactly shaped like my hand, you know, but uh, it, it's pretty much okay. The way I got this, I just traced it over my hand, and you always make a little excess room. You might think, oh, it has to be exactly the same size. But your fingers are round, and so if you trace around the edge, then you're going to get just the perimeter and not the whole air, air coverage area. That thing, that... I need to get back to school, but anyway. But the thing is, with most characters, like the Muppets, uh, characters have four fingers. And I wanted to give this character five. But the one I'm going to do for the dog, those hands, I want to do four fingers. And so I'm actually going to retrace my hand. And uh, to do five, four fingers, you may think, Jordan, you have five fingers, how's it going to work? Well, you actually put your pinky and your ring finger together in one finger, so this one has to be a lot bigger. And so, I'll put my right hand in here. There will be an arm connecting from here, it goes down, and then my arm will be in a separate sleeve that will connect the arm about here, and then it will look like the character is really interacting with the audience from here, or whatever. And I'll be below the camera, and that's basically what's going to happen. So as you can see, it's finally done. It was a lot of hard work, and uh, I'm, I'm glad it's finally finished, for now. So where we left off, I had the body done, but the arms are new. Uh, so yeah, I worked on the arms, and I what I did was, because I didn't know how to make them detachable. I was thinking, you know, maybe I could use some sort of clasp, or maybe I'd have to sew them together a little bit, and then just cut them off when I don't want them. Then I thought, you know, what about buttons, you know? We have buttons on shirts and pants, you know. Why not buttons? So, I what I did was, with the little holes as you saw before, I had these buttons, and what I did was I sewed them to the top of the arms right here. What you do is, you take the body, and you'll take this arm, for instance. You'll find the hole right here, and then you'll take the button and push it through until you feel it on the inside. I don't know if you can see it, but the inside you can see the button right there. And then the arm is somewhat secure. This is actually a little over a week since the last time I filmed. And uh, what I've noticed is that when I perform the character, uh, occasionally an arm might fall out. So what I'll probably end up doing is I'll go back and just sew like one stitch right here in the hole so it's a little more secure. As you can see, I have the four finger hands. Uh, of course, this finger is larger because it's my pinky and my ring finger. Uh, what I did was, I had fur for the entire arm except 
the palm of the hand was fleece. I, I originally intended to do that, and I did it in the final products. Most of the time, when I sew arms together with live arms, I usually go around in a circle to make sure that the arm is actually round at the bottom. And I wanted to try something different, and so this time, I actually just took the end of this arm, which is the stuffed arm, and I put it inside of the arm, just slightly, when I sewed it together. So you can see that it's not round at the bottom, it's actually coming to the center. And it's it looks odd from this way, but this way it looks okay, I guess. And as I said before, I'm done with the character for now. Rod arms are really complicated because there's lots of wiring and cutting and uh, just... It's, it's, it's a difficult thing to do, rod arms, and so I'll probably save that until later. Right now I'm getting ready for school and everything, and yeah, I just don't really have a lot of time, and I've, I've worked on this for a couple of weeks now, and so I want to do a few other things before summer ends, and so I might come back and finish the puppet, like on Thanksgiving break or something, Christmas break, I don't know, but uh, it's done for now. And yeah, I guess this is the end of part four. So I hope you guys enjoy, and I hope you decide to make your own puppets. But before I end, I want to give a big thanks to uh, a huge YouTuber in the puppet world. Uh, used to be known as Kermit3001, but now he goes by James Kemp. Uh, he actually gave me a couple of suggestions for this character, and I just want to say thank you to him, because he's one of my biggest inspirations for puppet building. I just want to say thank you to him, so... Yeah, that's it for me. I'm Jordan the Voices Guy. I'll see you next time, and bye! Yeah, I can't wait to see you guys next time. Hope we make some great videos in the future. <laughs>